I'm Dr. Karam Khan. I'm a cardiac anesthesiologist with Envision Physician Services and director of the Division of Cardiothoracic Anesthesia at HCA Northwest Hospital. In this video, we'll explore some of the benefits of continuous non-invasive blood pressure and advanced hemodynamic monitoring with the Edwards non-invasive finger cuff. We'll walk through key aspects underlying the technology and share some real-world examples of how the Acumen IQ non-invasive finger cuff has supplemented my practice of perioperative hemodynamic management. As discussed in previous Critical Insight videos, intraoperative hypotension is a significant problem and may put patients at increased risk for adverse events such as acute kidney injury, myocardial injury after non-cardiac surgery, and cerebrovascular injury. We've also learned that multiple studies have shown that continuous blood pressure monitoring is superior to intermittent monitoring for detecting and reducing intraoperative hypotension. The value of continuous non-invasive monitoring is relevant to all phases of care of the surgical patient. In particular, induction of anesthesia is a critical period requiring careful attention to the overall cardiovascular and hemodynamic status of the patient. Continuous non-invasive blood pressure monitoring during this period has been shown to reduce hypotension versus intermittent blood pressure monitoring. Continuous non-invasive blood pressure monitoring also avoids the risk of complications associated with arterial cannulation, such as thrombosis, bleeding, and vascular injury. This may improve patient safety for those patients in which arterial cannulation is not absolutely indicated while still delivering the same level of monitoring. In addition to providing beat-to-beat -beat blood pressure, Edwards Acumen IQ Finger Cuff also provides multiple advanced hemodynamic parameters. These parameters can be used to predict, target, and treat the underlying cause of hypotension, whether it be hypovolemia, vasodilation, or reduced cardiac contractility. Now let's take a moment to talk about how this technology works. All of Edwards' non-invasive finger cuffs combine the volume clamp and physio-cal methods to measure continuous and accurate beat-to-beat -beat blood pressure. The essence of the volume clamp method is to dynamically provide equal pressures on either side of the wall of the finger arteries by clamping the artery to a certain constant volume. The pressure in the cuff is then adjusted a thousand times each second to maintain a constant diameter of the arteries. Continuous recording of the cuff pressure results in a real-time pressure waveform, which is then reconstructed from a finger pressure waveform into a radio arterial waveform. The PhysioCal method, short for physiological calibration, is a real-time system that makes periodic adjustments to account for any significant changes in vasomotor tone. This is how the technology maintains its accuracy without the need for any external calibration. Another way to understand the volume clamp method is by reminding ourselves how intraarterial pressure is acquired. The intraarterial method utilizes a pressurized fluid system inside of the artery to continuously measure pressure. In comparison, the volume clamp method utilizes air pressure on the outside of the artery to continuously measure pressure. One important physiological requirement for the non-invasive finger cuff is the presence of distal blood flow to the monitored finger. The stability and quality of the waveform and measurements are directly correlated to the presence of adequate distal blood flow. This is a key concept to remember when determining if a patient is appropriate for the non-invasive finger cuff or if an invasive arterial line is indicated. Finally, the Edwards non-invasive finger cuff has been validated to the invasive arterial line, which is a clinical standard of blood pressure measurement. This is important to consider when comparing the finger cuff to other methods of blood pressure measurement, such as the oscillometric arm cuff. In my day to day practice, I find the use of the Edwards non invasive finger cuff beneficial in various settings. Let's take an example of an 85 year old female who initially presented with abdominal pain and distension. She was found to have a perforated bowel and was brought to the OR for an anticipated exploratory laparotomy and possible bowel resection. The physical exam and traditional vital signs were all pointing to this patient being severely hypovolemic. However, None of these findings were able to tell us the amount of fluid required for optimal resuscitation. I found that patients with similar clinical pictures to this one may experience significant hypotension following induction of anesthesia and throughout surgery. They usually require significant volume resuscitation prior to the induction of anesthesia to avoid this. In situations like this, I like to use the Acumen IQ finger cuff to not only provide continuous blood pressure monitoring, but also to help guide volume resuscitation. I look for significant increases in stroke volume and cardiac output in response to fluid challenges. After the patient is no longer found to be fluid responsive, 
I feel more confident with induction of anesthesia and initiation of the surgery. Let's look at another example. A 41-year-old morbidly obese male with a BMI of 42 presented to our facility for a sleeve gastrectomy. Prior to induction, an oscillometric blood pressure cuff was placed around the left upper arm. As we attempted to proceed with the case, we noticed that the cuff quite often didn't provide blood pressure measurements or release from the arm altogether. Despite using a large size blood pressure cuff, the size of the patient's arm made it impossible for the cuff to maintain a good fitting. An Acumen IQ cuff was placed around the finger of the left hand and provided a stable beat-to-beat -beat waveform throughout the case, even after tucking of the arms. Patient habitus and positioning can often create challenges with blood pressure monitoring via the oscillometric blood pressure cuff. Finally, I find the non-invasive finger cuff beneficial, especially when monitoring patients with abnormal heart rhythms or poor cardiac function. Oftentimes, these patients present for procedures in which invasive arterial line placement is typically not done. I found that placing a non-invasive finger cuff not only provides the beat-to-beat -beat blood pressure needed to effectively manage these patients, but can also help facilitate my workflow in these short procedures with quick turnover times. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion of the value of continuous non-invasive blood pressure and advanced hemodynamic monitoring, the review of the technology, and the examples of how I use it to augment my daily practice. For a more in-depth look at managing blood pressure and intraoperative hypotension, you can check out the determinants of blood pressure and intraoperative hypotension episodes of the Critical Insight series. For more information about the Acumen IQ cuff, you can use the link in the description below. Tune in to the next Critical Insights episode, where we'll continue our conversation on advanced monitoring. Like this video and subscribe to stay up to date on clinical education videos, symposium recordings, and more.